hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomic Canada. And yes, I'm back on Wednesday for the Ask Genomi HQ segment. Again, every other week I do one week is uh, Genomi's Magical Machine Mystery Tour and the next week is Ask Genomi HQ, where is the opportunity you can write us on our Genomi Canada or Genomi HQ social media, or many people actually even write me emails personally. Uh, sometimes if I can answer the question live, sometimes people do type in live and if I can answer it, I will, but if not, then maybe on an upcoming Ask Genomi HQ live, I will answer your questions. So today, let's flip around here. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> so for Ask Genomi HQ, I'm going to address, uh, I try to address a couple of topics, but you know, the time just races by. Ooh, so let me move my chair and get into position here. So for Ask Genomi HQ, what are we going to be doing today? Well, something I wanted to address right off the top is last week, on my Genobi's Magical Machine Mystery Tour, I showed this fabulous, you know, Genomi Pin Pal, and I showed this fabulous Genomi Bobbin Saver, and then, yes, these gorgeous Genomi scissors that are in this gorgeous Genomi scissor case here. Look at all the, ooh, look at all that sparkle. <laughs> so I showed these as part of the uh, magical Machine Mystery Tour that as we were counting inventory, all of these items are in our Genomi Canada warehouse. So I was letting everyone know all these fabulous goodies that Genomi Canada dealers have access to that will help you regardless of what your magical machine uh, that you have is. And I've also, uh, on our Genomi Life blog, we've done many posts, for example, about this uh, Memorycraft uh, 9450 workbook, for example. And it's loaded full of all this information to help you learn more about your machine. There's exercises in here to help you learn more of your machine. Now, again, it's not essential that you have this. You do have a very good work uh, uh instruction manual that comes with the machine, but this workbook is a great add-on for those who want more information. So I've been getting lots of questions from people saying, you know, where can I get those? Where can I get those? So do understand that, you know, I'm in Canada. Uh, I'm the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomi Canada, and our Genomi Life blog is based in Canada. So whenever I talk about these products, it's primarily to show, you know, what's here in Canada. But, you know, I realize we do have visitors from around the world, and I certainly appreciate all of that. So, but then, you know, I don't know what is available in the rest of the world, because again, we're in Canada, and you know, I don't even have access to our own Canadian uh, inventory system. <laughs> uh, I have to ask people, you know, what's in stock and physically go into the warehouse. So what you could do, though, is go type in your browser, Genomi Global Site. So type in your browser, Genomi Global Site. Click on that, and here is the Genomi Global site. You know that Genomi is based in uh, Japan, just outside of Tokyo. So uh, Genomi is a Japanese company, just turned 100 years. So on this Genomi Global site, it's the English version, so you can uh, scroll through. They've got many things like these Genomi bulletins, and you scroll down, and oh, they've got bulletins things about, oh, like this new ruler foot, for example, you can click on that, and here is a bulletin. Now, this came out a little while ago, but again, everybody's always curious, is there a ruler foot for my machine, for example? So here, it will give you the bulletin, including part numbers on what type of machine you have. So you can find out a lot of the information yourselves just by going on the Genome Global site uh, and uh, printing those bulletins. I keep mine in a binder, so they're a, a reference all the time. But if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, and again, depending on where you are in the world, do you see across the bottom of the screen, there are the various flags representing the various countries. And then if you go over here to this drop-down menu, 
Then over here to the right, there it says, you know, Americas, Europe, Asia, Middle Asia, Oceania, Africa. So depending on where you are in the world, you can go to the Genome Global site and then uh, select in this list to find other Genome subsidiaries. Now, Genome is based in, again, just outside of uh, Tokyo, Japan, and we're all subsidiaries of that main company. So uh, although Genome Canada and Genome America work together many times, we are two distinct entities. So what's in stock in Genome Canada won't necessarily be in stock in Genome uh, America. We carry a lot of the same merchandise, but not always. So again, if you're in this, the States, uh, then you can double check, go on genome.com, for example, and then you get a list of the dealers in Genome America. So then you can check with the Genome America dealers, hey, do you have that gorgeous scissor kit, for example, uh, and the pin pals and things like that. Or again, if you're in Australia, then you can check with your uh, Genome dealers in Australia and ask, you know, if they have those products. And if they don't, maybe if enough people uh, say, I want that Genome scissor set, then maybe your Genome uh, dealers based in your uh, area in your country will actually order it in. So that would be great. So again, yes, just a little uh, heads up there about um, uh, how you can maybe get these products in other parts of the world, uh, but it's always nice to, um, you know, connect with everyone <laughs> this way through technology. But again, just keep in mind that I am in Canada, so the things that I show on uh, Magical Machine Mystery Tour and Ask Genome HQ and our Genome Life blog and all of that really refers to what's here in Canada. Oh, Cheryl's here. Hello, hello. So what I wanted to talk about for Ask Genome HQ, that was one thing. Uh, but then the other thing is I always get questions about about this HP needle plate, ooh, which stands for our high performance needle plate. And luckily it's marked HP, so we know exactly which one it is. And even the little bobbin cover here is mentioned HP. And we can tell because it's got this single hole oriented to the left. You know, right here would be center needle position, over here would be right, and then here is left. So the HP needle plate has the left hand orientation. Now, there is a little foot that is to correspond with it is the HP foot, very slim foot. It's that perfect quarter of an inch. And this foot is modeled after the industrial feet that you find on many industrial sewing machines. It looks very similar to the foot that's on our straight stitch only high speed uh, machine, the HD9 and the 1600P, again, with that very low profile. Uh, so many people ask us, Will this work on my machine? Ooh, and then, then you can see this center groove lines up with that, oops, uh, that hole in the needle plate there. And then many people wonder, well, what's this other little hole here to the right? Well, this is for when, and I'll show you, uh, when your machine has the automatic uh, presser foot lift, and then when you turn your machine off and then back on again, and if this foot is still on, the needle will cycle back to center needle position. So we need that little hole there for the needle to come through so we don't break the needle. So again, we get all these questions of, well, will that work for my machine? You know, the HP needle plate came out with the fabulous Memorycraft 9450 which is a nine millimeter high shank machine. You know, all nine millimeter machines are high shank, uh, but it came out with the 9400 and then it came out with the 9450 and then the 6700. Oh, Gordon Madeline, hello. And then the uh, Memorycraft 15,000 quilt maker. And then those of us who had the version one or version two of the Memorycraft 15,000, we could upgrade our machine, update our machine to be that quilt maker version three, and then we could buy this upgrade kit if we wished. And it had the HP needle plate and HP foot in it. So then we needed to update our machine first in order for it to be compatible with that HP needle plate and HP foot. 
And then machines like the Indigo Skyline S9. Now, this is not the Skyline S9. This is the Skyline S6. But when we talk about the Indigo machines, we talk about here the, the strip of Indigo and these Indigo buttons, and then like the balance wheel is Indigo blue. So the Indigo Skyline S9. If you have an Indigo Skyline S9, you could use the HP needle plate and HP foot with your machine. If you have an original uh, Robin's Egg Blue Skyline S9, and again, this only applies to the S9 in the Skyline series. If it's the Robin's Egg Blue, where again, this would be the lighter blue and these would be the lighter blue, then you need to update that machine to version 2 in order to be compatible with that HP needle plate and that HP foot. Now, there are instructions if you go to the Genome Canada, genome.ca site, or again, genome.com, depending on where you are in the world, go on to your Genome site, and then there's information there about doing that update to then safely use the HP needle plate and HP foot. Oh, and Shane is here. Hello. Great to see you. So then, of course, when we've got the Continental M7, well, that machine comes with the HP needle plate. Uh, now, I mentioned 6700. If you have a 6650, which is kind of like the 6700's little sister, uh, that machine, again, you can purchase the HP noodle plate and the HP foot as an optional accessory. They come together in a kit, and then you can buy that. Again, will work for the 66. 50. It's the same, you know, guts as the 6700. So we generally recommend, again, if the machine uh, is compatible already with HP Noodle Play, chances are it already comes with. But if not, again, for Indigo Skyline S9 or the updated version or 6650, uh, then yes, you can purchase this as a separate kit and they come together. Now, the reason why we generally say only those machines that are compatible that you should really use this because you can get into some trouble. You know, Genomi always tries to think of everything and helps you avoid make any mistakes. So here on my fabulous Continental M7, in order to raise the needle plate, have you ever seen this? I lock the machine and then when I click this button here on the screen, oh, that needle plate is going to rise all by itself. It's fabulous. So, boom, there we go. Isn't that so cool? Oh, I love it. There is a magnet here that holds that needle plate in position. So when I'm going to switch this over to the HP needle plate and drop it in, watch our needle. Currently now it's in center needle position. As soon as I drop this needle plate into position, do you see how that foot went over to the left? And then, of course, on our screen, it says make sure you got the presser foot, uh, proper presser foot and holder attached and unlock there. And you see now only the HP stitches, which are generally straight stitch, uh, is uh, applicable. Everything else is grayed out. I can't use the twin needle function. I can't use the alphabets. I can't use the tapering stitches. I can't use the buttonhole stitches. Uh, I, when I go click the little curly cue, that's our stitch categories. I can only select the quilting stitches. All my applique, everything is grayed out. Quilting stitches, again, I can only do straight stitches. That is to prevent us from breaking any needles and, and damaging the machine because, again, of that left hand only needle position. So this is why we want to use the HP Noodle Plate in machines that have already been updated in what we call the firmware, which is like the computer components inside the machine, the programming of the machine. And when I uh, attach this little HP foot, then you'll see that it lines up, that groove, that long groove lines up with the needle or uh, with the hole in the needle plate there. So that's good. Now, always, whenever you change your needle plate and everything, I always recommend turn your balance wheel towards you. Make sure it's always towards you and double check. Again, I'll lift up the foot there and just, oh yes, look at that. That needle goes right in the middle of that hole. That is perfect. No problem at all. So then we know, yes, this is 
totally going to be fine. And of course, we know it's going to be fine because then our machine is set up that way. But again, I always like to just double check everything is cool. So if we're stitching along and using this, I love using, again, the HP needle plate. Many of us quilters love it for that perfect quarter of an inch, very slim profile. Uh, because this foot is integrated with the foot holder, again, there's like no movement side to side. That's why it's certainly very accurate for that quarter of an inch. Or again, many of us love it for that scant quarter. So that's great. When we turn the machine off... And we're done for the night, you know, you're like, that's it, I'm totally done. And then we come back the next day, watch when the needle cycles, it always goes back to center needle position in the beginning. So I turn it back on. So you'll see oh, there, and did you see the needle, the, the little tip of the needle just went right in that little hole there. So whenever we turn the machine off with the HP needle plate left on, and with that foot, uh, then again, the needle is going to cycle back to center needle position. That's why we need that little hole there, because the needle's going to go down slightly and back up. So again, Janome really tries to think of everything. They're trying to save you any sort of trouble, you know, down the road. So this is why, again, we recommend only those machines with that updated firmware should use this HP foot and HP needle plate. Now, other people say, but I've got a 9mm machine, like the Skyline S6, for example. So, my feed dogs are the same. They're the same 9mm, 7-point feed dog system. So, why can't I use that HP needle plate? So, when I remove here, this is our regular zigzag. And then the HP needle plate here. So when I snap this in, technically it will fit, but you'll see it's, you know, it's not really recommended. Now, did you ever wonder what's that little bullseye here on our needle plates? That little bullseye is actually where they recommend putting your finger to push the needle plate. Boom, it snaps in position. But did you notice nothing happened with my center needle position? It's still dead center. So if I tried to use this needle plate where my... Uh, needle is, oh, look at that. I'm going to break that needle in two seconds. <laughs> now, when I go over here to the LCD screen, this little S on uh, this question actually came up uh, a little earlier on um, Astronomy HQ the other week of what does this uh, S mean on the Skyline series of machines? So the Skyline series of machines, again, they're trying to uh, help you avoid any mistakes. When you snap in the straight stitch needle plate that comes with the Skyline S6, for example. Uh, they come with many Janome machines, but, you know, many Janome machines, there also is a straight stitch needle plate available. Uh, not for all machines, but for many, so double check with your dealer. Uh, but again, these fancier, more computerized machines, they really try to do some thinking for you. So here's the straight stitch needle plate with that center hole, and then there's a little groove to the left and a little groove to the right. So the center needle position here with that straight stitch needle plate... The Skyline S6, in this case, uh, that's what that S is for, where it says uh, straight stitch. So it thinks it has the straight stitch needle plate on because that's what comes included with the machine. It's not recommended to use the HP needle plate with the machine, which is why that center needle position didn't change. Now, some machines do have... Oh, for example, this left needle position stitch. So I can't change that little chirping sound says, no, you can't move your needle uh, one by one by one with those 98 needle positions. You can't do that with your straight stitch needle plate on. So some machines have this left hand stitch. So when I select it, I'll go back to straight stitch, uh, for center needle position. So there, center needle position. And again, I can't use that because boom, look at that. That's no good. But if I turn this to uh, select the stitch number four, in this case, the left hand, oh, it swings the needle over to the left. Uh, it's not quite in the center 
of that hole the way that it is on my Continental M7, which is designed to use this HP needle plate. But technically, the needle will clear. So, okay, we really could, if we needed to, use this needle plate. And then here, when I put on the little foot, because, you know, some people, I don't recommend this at all, but, you know, some people don't like to be told no. <laughs> so I say, okay, in that case, if you want to use it, it's up to you. It's not recommended. You could potentially damage your machine. You could potentially void your warranty uh, by using products that aren't really designed for your machine. Uh, but if you want to, it's up to you. But just be wary of things like, again, you've got to make sure you've got the correct stitch selected. So when I select, again, stitch number four with this HP needle plate that swings the needle over to the left, and then, oh yes, it clears that long groove. Again, it, the needle isn't quite centered in the hole, but it will work. Now, because the Skyline S6 is a manual presser foot lift, I have to reach around and lift the presser foot uh, manually. It's not an auto lift. So when I turn the machine off and then back on again, the needle will move back over to the right, but it doesn't cycle up and down the way it does with the auto lift machines. So I can't use the foot. Oh, and Terry's here. Hello. I can't use this HP foot with uh, the way it's currently set up now because you'll see, oh yes, my, my needle is above that little hole. That's not a problem. But again, remember that HP needle plate only has the hole to the left. So if I lift up my foot there, maybe you'll see that again in center needle position. No, it may clear the foot, that little hole, but it's going to hit the needle plate. So, oh, no, that's uh, to me, that's too many potential errors that if you were to use this setup, uh, make sure you, uh, I recommend put like a little piece of painter's tape or a little sticky note on your machine so you remind yourself, I've got this special HP needle plate on my machine and I've got that special foot on my machine and that I should only use, you know, in this case, it's stitch number four that swings the needle over to the left. So, Again, can you technically use it on nine millimeter, other nine millimeter machines? Yes, technically you can. Should you? Absolutely not. <laughs> Again, the advantage of using these uh, computerized machines is that uh, they do some thinking for you to help you avoid those mistakes. Now, uh, the question then comes up, okay, well, I've got an HP uh, needle plate, my foot, uh, my machine is compatible with the HP needle plate and HP foot. Can I use this HP2 AccuFeed Flex skinny narrow foot? Well, if your machine is AccuFeed compatible. So if you have, again, a Skyline S9, if you've got the, um, this comes with the Continental M7, but if you've got, again, the MemoryCraft 15,000 quilt maker and the updated versions uh, that will accept the HP needle plate and HP foot, well, yes, you can use this HP2 foot so long as your machine has AccuFeed. So in the case of the 6650, for example, yes, we can use the HP needle plate and HP foot, but that machine does not have AccuFeed, so then no, the HP2 foot is not recommended to use. It won't work on that machine uh, because it doesn't have AccuFeed. So uh, you've got to be, um, you know, careful again that even though your machine may be HP needle plate and HP foot compatible, if you want to use the HP2 AccuFeed Flex Foot, again, you have to ask uh, yourself then, does my machine have AccuFeed built in? So uh, for most of the time, yes, this will be fine. But in the case of, again, 6650, no, this will not work. Uh, so I hope that gives you a little bit <laughs> of a whirlwind of the uh, wonderful world of the HP Noodle Plate and HP Foot. They're a great combination if your machine is not compatible with them. However, if you're looking like for a new machine, uh, maybe this is something to look at of why you would select one model over another, for example, is to get that HP Noodle Plate and HP Foot. 
So there we go. So yes, but again, if you're looking for that perfect quarter of an inch, uh, my presentation oh two weeks ago on Astronomy HQ was about how to get that better quarter of an inch. So even if your machine isn't compatible with the HP needle plate and HP foot, uh, again, perhaps you can move the needle over a little bit to the right to make a more perfect scant quarter of an inch, or maybe use one of the many uh, pressure feeds that are either included with your machine, or I showed a bunch of um, optional presser feed as well that are available for a number of the Janome machines to help you perfect that uh, perfect quarter of an inch. So again, Janome is all about options. So thank you everyone for joining me today. It's wonderful to connect with you all and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Uh, oh, as a heads up, I will not be here live uh, next week. I will in fact be at Janome America. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm flying down to Janome America and will be there all next week. So I won't be um, doing that uh, the live, but I will be back live in two weeks time. Oh, and Cheryl is saying, yes, Michael, don't forget your foot on the Skyline S6. Exactly. Exactly, Cheryl. It's so easy to get so busy and, and then all of a sudden, boom, you turn on your machine and step on the gas and oh boy. <laughs> um, you know, I've done that a few times in my driveway when my car's been in reverse and I think, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's so easy to get distracted. So, uh, but yes, thank you everyone for joining me and have a wonderful uh, day. And again, I'll see you live in two weeks time. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>